Hello everyone, welcome to my guide on the Unenlightened. Last time we did the Cult Dance and the Grog Den. Now after this we move to the Castle of Light, but the first time we go through you actually don't need to fight. Something happens there, I will not tell you what, but the point is we're not gonna go to the Unenlightened where you have a regular enemies to fight. So here we have the Tang, Hunter, and the person over there is another Hunter. And there is also a second Hunter walking back and forth here. Uh, there are a few more enemies, but we're going to talk about them once we get to them. Now, we're going to use the new way to kill the hunter. If you're wondering what the new way is, it's a way to kill the enemy with up to 24 HP without using any mutations. Let me just attack. Now, if you don't know how to, I explain this in detail in the Grog Den um, episode. I am going to do it now just quickly, but if you're wondering about the exact details, how we got it, watch the Grogdon episode. Now, the important thing here is that uh, Pharaoh needs to be here. She cannot be moved uh, where Dax is or even further back here because you need to attack from the position where she's in because where she's right now, she's hidden. The hunter cannot see. If she had moved somewhere closer, the hunter would be able to see her and she wouldn't have such a good a crit chances because now we can see she has a 100% shot and a 100% crit chance. So again, if you don't know how I got to that, watch the Grogdon episode, it's explained there. But you, that's why she needs to be here, because if she had moved, for example, closer to the hunter, I will show you with ducks uh, later on, and her crit chance would change. So I'm just going to fire the weapon. Give up now and, I'll go easy on you. and we do 10 damage because we have the crossbow, which is fantastic. Now let me show you on ducks. Uh, Dax currently has a 75% shot and a 40% crit chance. Now we're going to move him closer to here, for example. But because he's... Oh, sorry, I got Borman. I messed up on that one. Well, I can show it Borman as well, I guess. Now we can see that his crit chance is lower to 25% because he moved so the hunter sees him. So that's why it's important that the Pharaoh is in a good position from the beginning so she is not moving and the hunter will not like accidentally see her or something. Okay, and Dex has a 100% shot from here, so we'll move him there and shoot. Okay, we've killed the hunter. Now, so let me just show you what some other enemies we have here. Uh, there's going to be a butcher here on the left. We're going to kill him now. Uh, if you have somebody whose abilities you have not revived yet, you want to be uh, using them for this fight. Now, you can see that Dax, Pharaoh, and uh, Borman actually have... Um, all of the abilities revived because we didn't need to use any ability on the and the same thing for me with uh, Magnus and uh, Selma also can use everything so we'll just stay with the people we have at the moment okay we're gonna move Borman to wherever and just shoot we only need two people to kill the butcher so uh, we're just gonna do it wherever Then we're going to move Pharaoh here, for example. Again, she has a 100% shot and she can just finish him up. Say my name, she's wife. It's Pharaoh. Okay. Butcher's dead. You did it, kid. Okay, next up, we have another enemy. Uh, then I'm going to show you the last enemy because the last enemy is like, wow. If you haven't seen him yet, it's going to blow your man mind a little bit. I mean, look at him. Doesn't he look imposing? I mean, come on. It's the Mimir Z600. He has 30 HP and 4 armor. And he's really like a huge enemy. He has some very interesting uh, fighting actions, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but there are two ways to kill these guys. And by these guys, I mean the Mimir and the tank with the two hunters. First, I'm going to show you kind of the proper way, the way that we can do this without getting any damage to ourselves. And then I'm going to do show you another way. The other way is a little tricky. It's pretty hard to do it without getting any damage. But it's a lot of fun and it's going to show you a trick that we haven't actually used so far in the game. And you could have used it in some of the previous zones as well. So that's why I really want to show you. It's, it's really interesting. So first step, what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that we have... Oh, this is... Okay, I made a mistake. So let me exit the combo. You gotta make sure that Dax has the circuit breaker ability equipped on him as well. So does Pharaoh. And also you gotta make sure that at least uh, one of these people has a, a weapon that's fairly long range. In my case, this is gonna be um, Borman. He has 17 range. Dax has 14, which is fine. Pharaoh only has the boomstick, which is not that great. It's gonna be important in a minute. So let me take Pharaoh because we're gonna start with her and we're gonna ambush. And he's gonna move up close. Somewhere where she gets 100% shot, which is here, for example. And she's gonna use the circuit breaker. 
Target DA is loaded. Neutralize all mutant intruders. Okay, then we're gonna move Dax, switch his weapon to the Elysium, and shoot from, I don't know, from here where he has 100% shot. And you gotta keep in mind how many more turns that your enemy is disabled, so just kind of be aware of that. And yeah, then we're gonna sh uh, switch the weapon on Borman and use him. Okay. Now then it's the Mimic turn, he's gonna be disabled for one more turn. So then we're gonna shoot up with Borman. And now you gotta be careful about this. We're gonna switch to the boomstick on Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh, if she gets a crit chance, she will actually kill the Mimir. You don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna do with her instead, we're gonna move her fairly far away, about there. And she's gonna shoot from here. And the reason for that is that if the Mimir... Okay, uh, one more thing, we're gonna move Dax back a little bit as well, about there. If the enemy dies, he will kind of blow up. So you gotta make sure that you are far enough from that. Okay, so let's use Pharaoh now. And it, she should kill him, because actually Dax did some damage. If she hits him. If she doesn't, it's fine, because he's disabled for one more turn. Okay, but she hit him. He'll blow up. And see, it didn't hurt us, but uh, if you're standing a little too close, you can uh, get hurt for quite a bit. So you gotta be careful about that. And you get 18 weapon parts, which is huge. Now next up, we're gonna continue towards these guys over here. Now after killing the Mimir, we have the two hunters and the tank. The last uh, hunter is actually far enough away from th these two guys. I can show you once I get uh, up here. That Let me just split up so that Borman uh, stays down here. So that uh, they cannot see him. The problem, however, is that when you try to kill... Kill the hunter, the, the killing shot is like moves him a little bit away, the way he kind of falls. And that's a problem because he tends to fall somewhere close to the hunter and the tank, so it kills him. I've tried this in multiple ways, I'm going to show you both ways. And watch where Borman is standing. And it doesn't matter where he's standing because in both directions it alerts the hunter. Not the tank, but the hunter. That's a problem. So uh, you want to make sure that you're going to kill them both all at once. Now we're going to switch Dax for Magnus, pretty important, and you got to make sure that your guys have a long range of weapons. This is going to be very important in this fight, so Magnus is going to take the Ancient Pistol, that's not really relevant, and I'm going to give him the or a Rambina or a Slinger. Uh, Rambina is a bit better, so I'll give him a Rambina. Uh, Pharaoh is going to take, instead of the boomstick, she's going to take the Elysium. And Boromir, again, he has a Rambino. He needs to have a long-range weapon. That's important. Then on Boromir, you need to have the Stone Skin and the Twitch Shot. On Pharaoh, you need to have Gunslinger. And on uh, Magnus, you need to have the Puppeteer. And also on Magnus, you want to take Run and Gun, but you want to take this Silent Assassin. And we're going to use that instead of the instead of the telekinesis shield, so he can have a higher crit chance. Okay, so, we're gonna start. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use Pharaoh, and you're gonna use her Gunslinger ability. Now, unfortunately, the Gunslinger doesn't have in range that Hunter, but that's okay, we're just gonna attack these two. You have 75% chance of an attack and 100% chance of a crit chance. You got a crit chance on them both, which is perfect. Next up, you're gonna Puppeteer the tank. Let's do it. Oh, and one more thing. Borman has the Axe Warrior armor that actually uh, is um, gonna stop the, um, the um, charge attacks. Now, uh, you have multiple options here. You can hog rush this hunter and attack the other hunter. Actually, you um, you can hog rush this hunter, or that hunter for that matter, but we're not going to do that because the enemies, they tend to attack the enemy who is the closest, so they will attack the tank. So we're not actually worried, we're going to leave the tank here and let, let them attack him. And then we're going to use Borman to attack 
that hunter over there. So we can actually kill him. Now that hunter over there should attack the tank. Yep. Moving over there and then he's shooting at him. It's actually great for you because you don't need to hurt the tank so much. Now, during this turn, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, use the tank to hog rush the hunter. So now you're going to have two turns to kill the hunter. That's perfect. And then you're going to use, a, you're going to move Borman closer to about there. There. And it says there that the tank should be on our side for one more turn. Actually, like, what I mean by that is that he's only going to switch next turn. So we don't have to worry about him right now. And we're going to use... Uh, we don't have the best shot from this higher ground, but that's okay. But just try. If you miss, then you miss. It's okay. The enemy is hog rush for two turns, so we don't really have to worry about it too much. Even if you miss him. Okay, we missed twice, that's perfectly fine. Now at this point, the tank is our enemy. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to move Borman somewhere close, like there. And you're going to use the stone skin. You want to make sure that he's close enough so that the enemy will attack Borman. Okay. And you can still shoot. We, uh, we're going to shoot the tank because the... Hunter is still hog rushed for one more turn, so he will not uh, attack you. And then again, you're gonna try shoot, shooting up from up here. Like I said, not the best chances from up here, but um, it still works. Maybe did some damage. Okay, the tank will try to um, charge attack Borman, but that's useless because Borman has this, uh, is um, immune. Again, next up, we're going to use a Borman to attack the tank. Kill him off. Just perfect. And we're going to keep trying to shoot with these guys. Now, you might be thinking, this is weird. Why am I not moving them closer, right? Like, why am I just going to try? Well, the thing is that uh, Borman has the twitch shot. So we're going to kill him off with... Um, I cannot show you now. But the point is that Borman has the twitch shot, so even if um, you wouldn't, you would still be unable to kill the hunter. You could just move there with Borman and kill him off with Borman. Okay, I, I didn't need to do that. You could potentially move them closer, but there is a risk with moving them closer, and that's the fact that if you do try to move them closer, they will just regroup. They will be closer, so the tank might decide to attack them instead of Borman. It's not like always the case. The enemies do tend to attack the one who's closest to them, but it's not always that way. So if you're moving them closer, you're risking that they will that they will attack them, and you don't want to do that. So just keep trying the 50% shot. There's a fairly good chance that at some point you will hit them. If you can, that's why we had the twitch shot on Borman. Because uh, the weapon on Borman does 8 damage, so during this last turn, when the hunter would actually no, no longer be knocked out, but we would have our player turn first, we'd move Borman here, and, and you would use the Twitch shot to kill him off. So you wouldn't actually need those guys up there, but uh, we, we got lucky, eventually they, they did the damage. So this is how you do it. There's going to be an additional video on the other way, using a very cool trick, and uh, well actually... You know what, I'm not going to tell you what the trick is, just watch the episode. I think it's a really fun way and it can be very useful, especially if you're not worried about doing this with 100%, but you want to have some fun. So I really love that way and uh, it's very interesting and it uh, kind of keeps you on your toes because you have to react to what the enemies are doing and uh, it's not as like maybe predictable as this behavior. It's going to be a little different. So yeah, stay tuned for that and subscribe so that you don't miss it and write me down a comment and I'll see you in the next area. Bye bye!